seas are a thriving and vibrant habitat. So far, about 230,000 marine species have been identified around the world, with an estimated 1 to 10 million yet to be discovered. The Caribbean region is particularly diverse. In 2014, we actually got the EV Nautilus to come to Trinidad and Tobago. The EV Nautilus is an exploration vessel as opposed to an RV, which would be a research vessel. The Nautilus is captained by Professor Robert Ballard, who is a world-renowned deep-sea biologist, as well as a marine archaeologist. We were also fortunate that now we had another Caribbean participant in Dr. Diva Amon, and of course myself. It was the first time we were having two women scientists on board. Using the remotely operated vehicles Hercules and Argus, the team explored the southeastern coast of Tobago to a depth of 2,100 meters. I felt that there would be a good opportunity for a project that would educate our population, and not only just young children, but also young minds, young scientists, young students, as well as adults. Curious? Good. Take a deep breath. Join us as we plunge into the chilly depths to see what lies beneath. As we begin our descent, the bright blue of the Caribbean waters take on a darker hue, as though the sun has slid below the horizon and the world is plunged into twilight. Deeper still, and on go the lights of the ROV as the sun's rays struggle to penetrate. The most exciting discovery for us off of the Trinidad and Tobago waters was when we discovered the methane seeps. This is an area where methane is being emitted from the bottom of the sea and it is actually frozen because of the extremely cold temperatures. So it actually looks like a snow cone mountain. Wow, spectacular. I'll never forget Hercules was over this methane seep and the methane was coming up and then being captured in our forehead and crystallizing. It looked like an upside down snow. Looks like what? Polistari. Yeah. 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 We are still discovering what it means to have these environments. They're important hotspots of biodiversity, that they are sources of food and production, possibly for surrounding organisms. They may be a source of new marine genetic resources. When the seep shut down, Due to seismic or other activity, the mobile population moves elsewhere in search of another treasure trove of rich emissions, but those animals that cannot move will die. They leave behind a sad and barren graveyard of shells and debris. So the deep sea provides us with many different services. Firstly, it's important for things like sequestering carbon and regulating our climate. Um, it detoxifies our oceans, it regulates our nutrients in the oceans worldwide. And also, it's important to us humans specifically because all of our resources on land are actually running out. Things like mineral resources, food resources, energy resources, and so on. And as a result, we're now pushing into our deeper oceans to get those. Most of the deep ocean is found in international waters where the International Seabed Authority is responsible for ensuring a balance between the interests of industry and the protection of marine habitats. The main uh, mandate of the International Seabed Authority is uh, born in the Convention of the Law of the Sea that uh, most of the Caribbean countries have signed. This instrument, born in the Convention, uh, calls for the regulation of all the activities and very well uh, agree in part 11 and annex number 3 of the Convention of the Law of the Sea and it has to deal with the deep sea mining and activities in the area. What it means, the area is the, that part of the oceans which are beyond national jurisdiction. It is imperative that we pursue knowledge about the deep sea such as those surrounding Trinidad and Tobago to be able to create laws and policies to help protect it. Every country, every government should allow the scientists, the means for the scientists. International cooperation, we do have 
the knowledge and we do have the expertise in our, all our countries to develop a, a robust scientific knowledge of the area. The vast resources of fossil fuels are currently vital to Trinidad and Tobago's success as an energy economy. But it is important for industry to work together with scientific and conservation efforts to ensure the responsible management of this fragile ecosystem. It's really important that the scientists get in there and have a chance to explore the region, map out these areas, find these sensitive communities uh, in advance of leasing and oil and gas industrial activity on the seafloor. The goal of scientists is obviously not to stop economic development, it's not to prevent oil and gas development from happening, it's to make sure that it's done in a responsible manner with the best available science so that these sensitive communities, the seeps and corals that are in deep water, can coexist with the human activities. In order to maintain their integrity and maintain their resilience and ability to recover from disturbance, we need to be looking at spatial planning and marine protected areas. We must protect these environments for their sake as well as ours. Deeper study can lead to breakthroughs that will provide us with new sources of medicines, foods, minerals and energy, as well as a new understanding of the geology and biodiversity of our region. The deep seas also play a critical role in climate regulation and nutrient cycling. Genetically are the source of the, li the life that we have on land and that we are part of it. It's therefore important that we humans in our privileged positions at the top of the food chain treat these wonders of the deep with the respect they deserve. My colleagues Judy Gobin and Diva Amman have been really at the forefront of deep sea studies in uh, the Caribbean region. The new discoveries in your waters and off Grenada are only the tip of the iceberg and that there's a lot more research to be done and a lot more discoveries to be made. <laughs>